please welcome to the stage Dr. Brent Siebold. At ASU, we have the entrepreneurial mindset in spades. We are all about entrepreneurial mindset for engineers, and we have a lot of engineers. We have over 20,000 engineers spread across six schools of engineering on two campuses in Metro Phoenix. So we have a lot of students and faculty and supporters that are practicing the art and science of innovation management. And so these manifest in project teams, many of whom you probably engage with in your own classes and in programs. So these are venture-based student teams and project-based student teams opting in to doing the hard work of innovation across all the different disciplines of engineering. So I've learned over my time working with these teams, they need two ingredients mainly to be successful. The first ingredient is pizza. So they need a lot of pizza, they need a lot of fuel for innovation to happen appropriately. Secondly, a little bit more importantly, they need good coaches. So mentors, because all of these teams are working on something very unique, uh, these coaches can come in and provide real-world examples and guidance and feedback to help them through the iterations required to produce good outcomes. So let me introduce you to Brian Reynolds. Brian is one of our venture mentors with whom we've been engaged for many years now. And he's been uh, helping us architect what I'd like to share with you today. It's called the Entrepreneurially Minded Mentor Playbook. And so Brian has helped us really zero in on some aha moments about how to make mentoring work sustainably and at full scale, not only at our institution, but hopefully at your institutions as well. So uh, Brian came to us at ASU from IBM. In fact, he uh, was an entrepreneur uh, in Ireland at IBM for many years uh, before retiring to the Valley of the Sun in, in Metro Phoenix. But we have a wide array of mentors who have come from all sorts of different industries, different backgrounds, uh, from industry and philanthropic organizations, you name it. And of course, at ASU, we have lots of golf courses and, and warm sun to attract these mentors. But I would make the case that regardless of where your institution is, you have these high caliber folks in your backyard that in many cases, they're itching to engage further and more deeply with the students you have within your classrooms, within your labs, uh, who are practicing innovation. They want to share uh, their experiences with those students. So as we started this mentoring program at full scale, we started with uh, volunteers. We had a long list, literally uh, a, a spreadsheet of over 300 folks in our community that raised their hand and said, if you need me to mentor, if you need me to judge, if you need me to participate in design review sessions, call me, email me, I'll be there as quickly as I, I can. So with this volunteer mentoring model, it was very nice to have such a positive response to this opportunity but it also presented uh, several unique challenges. When you have volunteers, you're missing out on opportunities to do, in some cases, background checks at full scale or really deeply you know, finding out what makes these people tick. And in some cases, you end up with mentors that you don't necessarily want or need associated with your program if you want excellence and impact out in the marketplace. So there were some headaches involved with this long list of mentors as, as nice as it, was, as it was to have. So we kind of looked at other ways we might be able to um, uh, power this mentoring opportunity within our schools. And so we started writing grants and we won grant uh, awards in, in pretty nice little chunks of pots of money that we then started doling out to some of our top mentors to keep them uh, engaged and, and keep the deliverables rolling in the direction we wanted. Unfortunately, what happened was these mentors got wind of how much money we had in our coffers from the grant awards, and they started sending us literally invoices for their bill billable hours as consultants, uh, as many of them were in retirement or semi-retirement. So you don't want the bobs running around sending you invoices to, to maintain your mentoring program. So what we had over the course of literally uh, the time I was involved, about five years of trial and error, figuring out how to do mentoring. We know it's so important for entrepreneurial mindset and innovation management. We tried peer mentoring, we tried faculty mentoring, we tried the consultant route, we tried the volunteers. None of these things were solving the pain points that we were afflicted with. So I personally was very frustrated, banging my head against the wall. And then I realized I'm at the school, number one in innovation, four years in a row we've got to be able to figure this out. There's got to be a sustainable solution, a business model that we can employ to this to make it work. And it was, in fact, Brian that came to me one day and said, you know, mentoring is very Socratic. Mentoring is teaching. 
And that's when the light bulb went off. Mentoring is teaching. We teach at the university every day. That's our core competency. And if we truly believe that your mentors are teaching, we're onto something. We can then integrate the mentoring program directly into our core business model at our university and presumably at your university as well. So because we're so good at integrating learning outcomes towards graduation, many of those being directly affiliated with the entrepreneurial mindset, we can start to formalize this process of mentoring for multiple t project teams or venture-based teams. So what we found over the course of this volunteer trial and error and the consulting trial and error is that there's a standard process by which teams will come in and engage with our mentors. So here you see an example of entrepreneurial students, the uh, tandem bicycle representing the engineering skill set, coupled with the entrepreneurial mindset, working with a seasoned industry mentor to really cycle through the iterations required for innovation. So we took that standard process that we knew very well and we wrote it into a syllabus, something that in higher ed, this is our currency. Everybody understands what a syllabus is. And every syllabus has learning outcomes. In our case, it had to do with project or venture-based teams innovating for impact within the marketplace. So once it was in the syllabus, we could then very clearly articulate the expectations of our mentors and how that was going to impact the students. So here you see two students on a, on a project-based team interacting with Brian, and Brian was assigned up to six teams. Each team had a, has on average about three co-founders or members, and that equates to a, a, a classroom of students. And in the mentoring world, we don't necessarily have to use classrooms. We can put this syllabus online. Brian can meet with his teams at Starbucks. He can meet with them on Google Hangout, on Skype. These mentoring interactions can happen at full scale. So at ASU, we think big, we're global. So this mentoring program has to not only work in Metro Phoenix, it's gotta work around the world. Luckily, we have these resources and we also have Jim Colifello. This is my boss. And like many of you in this room, he loves students. And so when you tell administrators at your school or your university that your student outcomes are gonna be better because of the bolt-on mentoring program, reinforcing what we're doing as faculty in the classroom, there's gonna be tremendous buy-in. So Jim took a gamble. He said, you know what? Let's go ahead and write some contracts to Brian and another a pilot group of mentors and let's see what happens. So what we did at ASU is we wrote academic associate contracts. These are akin to the faculty associate contracts, the adjunct uh, contracts that your business offices are probably already very adept at churning out term after term after term. So your adjunct faculty population is now being augmented by these paraprofessional mentors that you're recruiting in from industry. So it's very exciting to write a contract to Brian who's been volunteering his time, he's happy to do it, but once he gets that formal contract, he has a university email address, he's over the moon. So this is a win-win scenario. Not only that, but he's accountable. So because we're contracting these mentors to teach the equivalent of a one credit hour class with no less than 18 students enrolled, we can then say a one credit hour class at our university is the equivalent to 45 contact hours. And that equates to three hours per week. So Brian, at minimum, is spending three hours per week with each of his teams uh, over the course of an entire semester, any term. And then he gets paid. <laughs> so uh, it's not a lot of money. We, we're operating on market rates. And as many folks know, adjunct faculty at most universities don't get paid that much. But because of the nature of mentoring, Brian and his peers don't require that much in compensation. So he gets to take his wife out to a nice dinner every so often with our contract money. And then we set him loose. We set Brian and his, his uh, peers who went through this uh, this initial cohort, this pilot cohort, term after term, many, many student teams working, and he did way more than three hours per week. Most mentors do because they absolutely love the interaction with our students. Uh, as a formal employee, he felt very accountable. He had great outcomes, and in many cases, students were you know, seeing intrinsic value come out of this mentoring experience, but also extrinsic value in the form of, in this case, a $100,000 grant that our student team just won this past year. So we're seeing outcomes of excellence at full-scale operation at our institution. And I could never do it alone. As a faculty, along with my other faculty, we're loaded with classes and other administrative duties. These academic associate mentors really just 
add an extra boost of energy to our total student population practicing the difficult sport of entrepreneurial mindset and innovation within our university. It's, it's no different than having assistant coaches. If we are the, the head coach of the entrepreneurship program or the entrepreneurial mindset curriculum, we've got a cadre of assistant coaches back, backing us up. And with these positive outcomes, we've scaled. We went from a pilot group who you met recently of six venture mentors, academic associates, to now at ASU we have over 50 of these paraprofessionals under contract term after term after term. So this is operating sustainably. It's part of the core business model of the university. No single administrator bats an eyelash because we already have a whole uh, slew of faculty associates already con under contract. So if you wanna take a look under the hood, learn from the mistakes that we've made over the past almost decade at ASU trying to figure out how to do this at full scale, I invite you to uh, take a look at our entrepreneurially minded mentor playbook. Happy to share it with you. And together, we can really dig into making diversity a priority among both our mentors and our students in STEM and entrepreneurship, and also have a little bit of fun along the way and make some big impacts with our students. And ultimately, we're going to change the world. <laughs>